What's up guys, it's Alex here back for another video and this is a continuation of our battle guide. Uh, this is the one on fighting ranged guards and it's part two. So in this part we're going to be doing a demonstration on how to fight um, the ranged guards with the help of magic. Alright, so let's just go ahead and get into this. Alright, uh, the first one that I'm going to demonstrate are the simple magics, the mass slow, shield, stone skin, and haste. So that's what we're going to be demonstrating here. Alright, so of course when you're using, uh, when you're relying on something like mass slow, shield, and haste, you do need army, right? You can't just do these without actually having any army, but... With the help of these spells, you can make breaks or do fights that would otherwise really, really hurt and, uh, you know, do them reasonably well. So I'll show you guys here. So basically, we're fighting Cyclop Kings here, right? 1599 of them, they're guarding a relic and a major artifact. Uh, so that's, you know, close to the amount that we would have on the break. Uh, so, and we have about 32 wyverns, so, you know, reasonable amount of wyvern to break with. And we also have a dragon and some harpies that can actually outspeed the Cyclop Kings. So, the reason that we are going to need to use slow here... And see, auto combat actually cannot do this, so this is a really tough fight, right? But as you guys will see, utilizing proper strategies, uh, even something like this is not that bad. So the main concept here is going to be that we need to block off as many of the stacks as we can using these one stacks and the dragon, and also close the gap with our wyvern. So the wyvern can close the gap, but barely, right? So speed seven units can close the gap with expert tactics. Uh, if you have speed, you would, you know, the one stacks that we have need to be speed seven or higher so they can close the gap as well. Otherwise, it would do, do you no good. And the reason that we're actually using slow here is because the Cyclop Kings have speed eight. So when we use slow, they will move, or our wyvern will move first, right? So that's what we want here. We want the wyvern to move first and do as much damage as possible uh, before the cyclops actually have a chance to attack or shoot us. So we're going to be using mass slow first round. And then the dragon will block off this stack here, and then the harpies will block off the bottom like this. And then the wyvern and go here and here. Okay, so seeing none of the Cyclops uh, got an accurate or a shot, uh, a range shot, so that's what we wanted here. Now, let's go ahead and use Stone Skin to raise our defense, to minimize our losses even more. And I think what we'll do here is put the Harpy Hag right here, like this, I think. Then this wyvern can go ahead and hit this cyclops stack, and this one can block off these two. Okay, so this guy did get a shot off, which is annoying, but it's not that bad. So actually now, we're going to use this... Oh, actually, they're going to get one more shot, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and use shield. So this is a little bit unfortunate if it wasn't for this terrain, we would be able to block this guy off this round and the last round. Uh, so he is getting a couple of unanswered shots, but oh well. Okay. No more unanswered shots for you. All right. So we ended up losing six wyvern. You see, I mean, yeah, that's still, you know, a reasonably high loss. We lost our dragon as well. However, when you compare that to auto combat just dying, right, that is a really, really good result, actually. And, you know, uh, Cyclop Kings is a really tough break, and we still have 26 wyvern here, so we will still be able to get stuff done in the center with that. So, again, when you do something like that with, you know, just utility magic, 
magic like uh, slow haste and shield, you do have to plan for some losses. So there's almost no way to avoid that unless you actually have, you know, uh, some kind of battle magic or resurrect or something like that to avoid those losses. So even when you're smart, you are likely, uh, you know, here we did almost as well as we possibly could have in blocking off the stacks, uh, but we still ended up losing six wyverns. So just make sure that it's worth it, uh, you know, whatever you're fighting. And in a lot of cases, you know, if we were doing the break and if that was our break and we had 32 wyvern and one dragon and we had 26 wyvern after that, I think that would be a reasonably good result for a tough break like Cyclop Kings. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys uh, the same thing, but with mass haste. So this should also go reasonably well. And this works without necessarily having mass haste either. So like if you have a power stack, uh, you know, one power stack of Wyvern and you haste to that, so you can close the gap. And actually this would even, with mass haste, this would work without even tactics because I would have enough speed on all of my units except for the dragons to close the gap because the Wyvern are two hex units and in position one and two, they would be able to close the gap here, so. Okay, all right, and here is actually a little bit more reasonable. We should be able to block off all of these stacks and not get hit uh, by the rain shot. Once again, we can go ahead and do stone skin. This stack blocks off everything here, and this stack blocks off these two guys. Okay, cool. Now let's do shield once again. Um, let's go ahead and change the positioning of the wyvern here so that this guy takes a little bit of uh, some hits since he's a little bit healthier. So I'll put the harpy hag here. Uh, this wyvern can attack this eight stack and this wyvern can attack this eight stack. Okay, cool. And now let's go ahead and have this wyvern go here and this one here. Okay, and I think we shouldn't be losing anymore. So you see we did even better than in the last one. Here we only lost four because we were able to actually uh, not let them get those shots. Like in the uh, demonstration was slow. And once again, you know, auto combat can't, could not do this. And that is a really, really tough fight. But like this, using this utility magic, uh, we were still able to do this without really losing too much. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate using battle magic. And you can have any number of things to help you with ranged guards. Uh, you can have Meteor Shower, you can have Armageddon, uh, as long as you can survive that Armageddon. You can have Resurrect as well, that can help you. But one of my favorites is having Chain Lightning with Soul Mirror. I actually prefer a Soul Mirror start for Tower, and this is a big part of the reason, because you can do ranged guards and blocks that you can't really do with anybody else, and you can also uh, fight ranged uh, breaks. You know, if your break is close enough, well, not like in this map, but let's say if your break is like uh, Power Liches or Enchanters, and you're actually within like a thousand moves, uh, or maybe 1500 moves from your main town or a town to the break then you can actually hit and run it and uh, finish it without even using that much mana so something like power liches and enchanters that don't have too much health are really susceptible to something like that so for that reason I like having a soul mirror so here we're going to do kind of like an early game fight. We're going to be doing Storm Elementals. And there's actually close to 49 of them here. And I love this fight on Solmir because these guys are actually vulnerable to Chain Lightning. So all we have is our Day 1 uh, army, the Gremlins, Golems, and um, uh, Gargoyles. And we have four Genie 1 stacks to give us first move and to also do some casts. And we have six Spell Power. So usually... 
you can get a decent amount of spell power on the map with like schools of magic and whatnot or uh you know things like the tunic or you know some artifacts that give you spell power so this is not unreasonable to have six spell power as soul mirror in the early game so let's go all right you see so actually auto combat cannot even do this right but because we get first move we immediately use chain lightning and since these guys are vulnerable we nearly took down half of them already now the genies can cast All right. we do lose some gremlins here but it's not gonna be that bad now I think we're just gonna move forward with the genies Okay. And we can just finish this off with the genies. So, easy. Just uh, 10 gremlins and one uh, gargoyle loss. So 34, uh, 34 storm elementals that killed us. Otherwise, we, with the help of uh, chain lightning, were able to kill them without really losing much. Okay, so now I'm going to be demonstrating doing something more difficult with Solnir, like these 5099 Enchanters. This could very easily be your break. Uh, this could very easily be something like this, but maybe they're guarding something really good, like an Earth Tome or something like that. And let's say you don't have that much army, you don't really have the tools to deal with them, or maybe you just don't want to lose a whole lot of army. Well, in a situation like this, or let's say if this was, you know, a break that was really close to your uh, side town or ma main town, or in a situation like this where you already have a town right next to it, you can do hit and runs. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how very easily, just for the cost of some mana and some gold of buying back our hero, we'll be able to kill these guys. So here uh, we have, I'm not gonna use any of these OP spell power artifacts. We're gonna have about 11 spell power. We do have expert air magic because we are utilizing chain lightning here. Uh, I do like having expert air because that allows you to hit five targets with your chain lightning rather than four. So uh, the one thing that you do wanna make sure that you do if you are going for these hit and run tactics is that you have first move right so these guys have speed nine and we need speed nine or higher to make the first move so we can cast and retreat so here we're gonna have obsidian gargoyles and basically so 340 moves to get here so we just go ahead and use chain lightning and retreat Buy him back, rinse and repeat. Another 340 moves. And I think with the third run by, we can already finish them. Just bring some of our army. Something like that. And we shouldn't lose too much except for maybe some gremlins. And another 340 moves. So this was a total of about a thousand moves. So imagine this being an Earth Tome. This would be really worth it, right? When otherwise these enchanters are really, 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 really nasty. So. So we do lose uh, almost all of our gremlins, but that's fine. Really, if we wanted to not lose any gremlins, we could just go for another hit and run. Let's see. Overall, very reasonable losses for killing nearly a hundred enchanters, right? And enchanters can be really, really nasty. So 
like this, we can do them without too much trouble. And like I said, you can utilize any kind of battle magic. I'm not going to demonstrate all of them, but I did have a uh, actual real game where I was playing Conflux once and I found an Armageddon Shrine and I had to deal with an Enchanter's Break. So I just got a couple of uh, level two or three Elementalist heroes with like four spell power and advanced wisdom to get Armageddon and I did like three suicide bombs and I think in three or four suicide bombs with four spell power I was able to clear the break with you know no losses of army so that is something that you can definitely utilize meteor shower works Another interesting uh, magic that will work is Resurrect, but, you know, that's a little bit more tricky because you do need to have a decent amount of mana. I do think I'll do a demonstration on that next. Okay, and now I am going to demonstrate using Resurrect. So uh, here we have an army of about uh, 40 genies. <clears throat> Clearly, when you do have... Uh, when you are using resurrect, uh, you know you're, you got to have some army that you can resurrect, right? Again, something like enchanters, they can be really nasty uh, with their spell casting and their no melee penalty. So, I if I could help it, I would certainly use the uh, like chain lightning or battle magic against them. Uh, it seems to work a bit better, especially if you can hit and run them. But in some cases, you may only have Resurrect, like you got Alamar with Earth or Jadit with Earth or something like that, and you have to deal with it. So uh, something like this, 40 genies, um, an angel, well, the angel doesn't really matter that much, but a little bit of meat should be fine. And uh, we did put on the Lion's Shield of Courage uh, to give ourselves some stats as well here. I would say not unreasonable stats, you know, when you're dealing with something like that. This is probably about what you want. So, um, yeah, let's just get into this. All right, and what we're going to plan to do here is we're going to wait with everybody, see what kind of cast they have, and, you know, they'll probably go for our genies right away, and then maybe we can resurrect them right away, and then we close the gap on turn two. So let's wait. Okay, so they actually hasted themselves, which is really bad for us. Uh, so they would go first next round and pretty much kill us. This is actually why these guys are so nasty. Uh, you know, I had a game, I had a real game once where... I had like 30 Wyvern or something like that, and I was, I had, I think I had Tactics, uh, or no, 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 I didn't have Tactics, but I was closing the gap, and I planned to close the gap in two turns, and they just hasted themselves, I was going to haste myself, uh, but after I did that, they hasted themselves, and just had two unanswered attacks with a straight arrow, with my Wyvern in range of a straight arrow, and I just died without being able to do anything, so yeah, these guys can definitely be really nasty. But with the right tools, you can still deal with them. Uh, so here, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to use mass haste of our own to negate their uh, haste. So we will still move first here. I think that would be the right move in this case. And then round two, we can start resurrecting. can go ahead and resurrect this genie stack. The angel isn't going to do anything. Genie kills. Genie kills. Okay, well, the angel died. Well, we can resurrect him, if anything. Naga's died. We don't really care that much about them. Alright, round three. Okay, and I suppose we may as well resurrect our angel. We don't really have to at this point. If we were trying to save our mana, we could just, uh, you know, we have all of our genies and we can kill the enchanters right now. But, you know, for the sake of having an angel, it might help us uh, get first move in the final fight or something like that. We should do that. So see, very, very acceptable losses against uh, nearly a throng of enchanters. So if it wasn't for that, um, we would not have been able to do it.
Okay, and the last one that we're gonna demonstrate is perhaps the most obvious one, but a lot of times people may forget about it because it is forgetfulness, right? So uh, mass forgetfulness is really good at, you know, at expert level uh, wa water magic, you will, uh, you know, completely negate their ranged attack with mass forgetfulness. And it is something that works really well for conflux because as conflux, you can always buy water magic and magic university. So a lot of times when you're facing a break like Cyclop Kings uh, as Luna or maybe even Enchanters, you will be able to deal with them using this tactic, right? Just remember that you cannot do this against Titans and that you cannot do this against Power Liches because they are immune to Mind Spells. So you can do this on uh, Cyclops, Cyclops Kings, and... Um, Enchanters and well any other ranged guards that are not immune uh, and of course if you have the black orb you would be able to do this against titans and against the power liches as well. Also remember to have first move so here if we only had regular pixies the cyclop kings and we brought one pixie uh, the cyclop kings would have shot it and we would have died so remember about remember that. Okay, so basically around one we just cast Forgetfulness, and then after that it just becomes regular Luna Kebabs here. All right, and there you have it. Actually, that was a bit of a difficult one, but this is not a uh, Luna guide. This is more of a doing ranged guards with magic. The big part here was forgetfulness, not the firewall mechanics. That's why I didn't really take the time to explain that. If you guys are interested in that, do take a look at my Luna videos. I have quite a few of those. Alright guys, well uh, that's about all of the techniques that I wanted to demonstrate in terms of utilizing magic. Uh, if you guys think that there are some that I missed that are worth mentioning or including, do let me know uh, in the comments below. Otherwise, I do hope that you guys found this video useful and helpful. And uh, yeah, as always, check out my Twitch stream. The link will be in the description below for more English-speaking Heroes 3 content. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.